that op-ed dropped last night. I'm Leland Vitter. The White House is now responding to the op-ed and slamming Mueller for, quote, pontificating in the editorial pages with more spin. Mark Meredith, live at the White House. You have to wonder whether they expected any kind of response from Mueller or not. Hey, Leland, good afternoon. Roger Mueller, I'm sorry, Robert Mueller does not make uh, comments very often on the record, but obviously he was fired up after President Trump decided to commute Roger Stone's sentence, that 40-month prison term. We also have heard from Robert Mueller in this op-ed, and of course, he is defending the work by the uh, his department when it came to the Russia probe. We have not uh, heard directly from Mueller on camera, but the president has repeatedly said Stone was unfairly targeted by the probe. Mueller in his op-ed writes, we made every decision in Stone's case, as in all of our cases, based solely on the facts and the law in accordance with the rule of law. Now, President Trump appears to be brushing off this uh, criticism that he's been getting over the Stone decision, and the White House responded to Mueller's op-ed saying that they don't feel that an op-ed is the right place for Mueller to be speaking out. They believe that the Russia report should speak for itself. President Trump also weighing in on the Stone controversy last night. People are extremely happy because in this country they want justice, and Roger Stone was not treated properly. But this decision really has sparked some new outrage up on Capitol Hill with Democrats accusing the president of abusing his power. We heard from the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee in a tweet in which Jerry Nadler says, quote, by commuting a sentence, President Trump has infected our judicial system with partisanship and cronyism and attacked the rule of law. House Judiciary will conduct an aggressive investigation into this brazen corruption. And at least one powerful uh, Senate Republican also has some concern. Pat Toomey writing, while I understand the frustration with the badly flawed Russia collusion investigation, in my view, commuting Roger Stone's sentence is a mistake. Now, so far since taking office, President Trump has issued less than a dozen commutations uh, since 2017. His predecessor obviously issuing a lot more than that, more than 1,700. Presidents Bush and Clinton issuing far fewer. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is also upset about the Stone commutation, and she is calling on Congress to rein in some of the president's pardoning powers. Leland. Mark Meredith, North Lawn of the White House. We'll see if we see President Trump on camera today. Mark will be there all day to report on it. Thank you, sir. You Jillian's got more. Joining us now for more reaction, President Trump's personal attorney and senior legal advisor to his campaign, Jenna Ellis. Jenna, so we all know us being, you know, ordinary Americans, non-government employees, that this is something has been coming down the pike for a while, the pardoning of Roger Stone. Um, is it something the president gave serious thought to, and is it something that um, was widely debated and discussed, or did the president know from the get-go that this, this was a commutation he was going to make? Yeah, well, it is a commutation, not a pardon. And obviously, I'm not going to get into the internal deliberations, but I think that the timing does speak for itself, where, uh, you know, this was just days before uh, Roger Stone was supposed to report to federal prison. And uh, the judge in this instance uh, could have and should have granted a new trial based on everything that we know about uh, the lack of due process in that case. And so, with Robert Mueller coming out with this op-ed, it just further shows proof for anyone reasonable and objective watching that this was a political target that was designed designed uh, to, uh, to target President Trump's allies for process crimes and, uh, un and, and due process uh, th that was just absolutely absurd. And so, uh, so President Trump putting out this commutation, I think, was not only uh, constitutional and proper, um, but it's in keeping with the power pardon um, of the president in the Constitution that provides that the president is the last full guardian of genuine justice. And Roger Stone absolutely deserves okay. Okay, Jenna, the, Jenna the question, Jenna, excuse me, the question, though, was, was there an internal deliberation or was this a decision President Trump made on his own? And did he make alternate considerations? Did he hear debate from both sides of the argument here? Or was he very convinced that this is a commutation he was going to make from day one? Well, I did answer that, Jillian, and I said that I'm not going to get into the internal deliberations. Of course, as a personal attorney to the president, those conversations are absolutely privileged. And so what I will tell you is that this, uh, the timing does speak for itself. And this particular commutation was absolutely constitutional. It was justified. And the American people looking at what happened to Roger Stone, look at, looking at what happened in the Mueller investigation, and now 
now with this op-ed with Robert Mueller, as a prosecutor, he should be completely disinterested uh, in this particular commutation. It's absolutely irresponsible to come out and have to justify his prosecution uh, with the separation that uh, should be here in this instance. And so he should have just remained quiet and allowed the commutation to proceed. Um, Roger Stone being a 67-year-old man with underlying health uh, conditions uh, for a medical commutation even uh, with the whole COVID-19 situation, you have people who are violent criminals that are being released in California and other states. And yet, uh, the, you know, the leftist wants to pretend and the Democrats want to pretend that somehow, you know, this is some kind of a big deal. It's just simply not. Um, can you tell us if there was anybody who presented to President Trump an argument at any point for not commuting the sentence of Roger Stone? Um, again, those, those individuals would have to speak for themselves, and all of those uh, internal communications are privileged. And uh, that's something that, as his attorney, I'm not going to get into. But uh, the, the Constitution does provide in Article 2 that it's the president, regardless of what advice either way uh, is given, whether it, you know, it's advice against it, it's, an, it's advice for a full pardon, it's advice for exactly what he did. It's ultimately the president's decision with all of the information to make that call. And it's my firm belief that he did absolutely absolutely make the right call here. And for people like well, Nancy Pelosi, so who you are saying— just um, you just mentioned a pardon. Did the president consider pardoning him at any point? Um, you know, you'd have to ask that to the president. And I know you keep asking me this question, but again, that's attorney-client privilege. And what I will say is that the Constitution speaks for itself. The president made his decision here. It was absolutely correct. And for Nancy Pelosi and Democrats to think that somehow through legislation they can amend unilaterally the Constitution, she really needs to read the Constitution and realize the limitations of the separation of powers here. Um, Jenna, just so you know, before we wrap here, I'm asking you the question because we invited you on the show today to hopefully get some more information from you, not to just have you knock on Democrats and Nancy Pelosi. We were hoping that you could provide some perspective on this. We appreciate your hopefully time. Hopefully I did Jenna. provide some perspective Leland. constitutionally. Thanks.